the Bahima, I should say, are losing themselves or we have lost ourselves. You can see um, him a beautiful woman or handsome man. The features are still there slightly, but the culture, you know, because it's only the physical appearance that uh, makes uh, a culture, but the language has uh, disappeared. When I grew up, there was this, uh, the nature in the area. The environment was green, I should say. I remember when I was young, we used to have a variety of wild fruits, for example. We used to have honey every holiday around April of each year. I was looking forward to having, eating honey every year, but this is no more. Everyone cuts trees mainly and clear bushes because we have to create, we want to create uh, clean farms like the ones you see in Europe. Because we are cutting a lot of trees, we don't get rain in the normal seasons anymore. So you can spend five months without any rain. We are also experiencing floods. These floods started appearing recently. So you get areas that had never experienced floods, flooding. And of course this affects our animals. They get food rot. The fact is we are you know, naturally the ad, uh, adaptation abilities of the herders, I think, are very unique and special. Somehow, we, we are restricted. You can't move. But when it gets very dry, certainly you find a way of moving. So a challenge is, if it's so dry, you can't look at your cow and let it die. So we try to find ways of getting away. Either we agree with neighbors and move our animals, if you are slightly richer, you carry the water and bring it to the well, to the cows, or you get a truck and carry the cattle to some, you know, permanent uh, water sources. So these are challenges. It's very, very expensive, of course. You, you know, the normal herder will not afford it. So we are all being forced to find alternative incomes. Because we are forced to stay also, now we have to find ways of digging and growing some crops. This was traditionally not our livelihood. What, what Cassava, maize, banana, the plantain, um, Irish potatoes, and even the sweet potatoes, other vegetables. All the Bahima who have just, uh, you know, learned this cultivation of crops. And the government was giving farm I mean was giving our communities you know special seeds and uh, cuttings of cassava and uh, leaves for for the potato and most of them I mean would just take and you know put in the soil we get people who think uh, have the tradition so we employ people who we think have a tradition of uh, cultivating and we pay them money to do for us the cultivation. We live with other communities who are cultivators so we just go to them and call them and give them a job to do for us the cultivation. So most Bahima are not actually doing it uh, themselves. Those who have tried are uh, learning by making the mistakes. So the first maybe crop they didn't know how to do it then the next they will learn from a neighbor and somehow they are catching up and they are learning. I mean, human beings or even pastoralists, I should say. The impact is happening on the community itself because we are losing the indigenous breed. Somehow we shall lose it to some level because of the indiscriminate crossbreeding. Everyone is bringing in any black and white thinking when you cross it with your or even selling whole herds of the indigenous breed, the Ankole cow, and bringing in the crossed cows. So this is very dangerous for us as a community or even as a country, I should say, because when we lose this uh, genetic uh, you know, breed, uh, we shall lose ourselves, we shall lose the best that we have as a country. When they, we use the chemicals, for example, to kill the ticks so that they don't affect the crossbreed, it uh, 
the resistance, if it's there and it's resistant, then it's also biting the Ankole cow. The Ankole cow will not be affected as much as the crossbreed, but I have a feeling it's also getting impacted in a way that it, it will also lose its, uh, its uh, hardiness, its uh, resi resilience and resistance to all these diseases. Because now it's restricted in one area. I have a feeling that this resistance was being gained because it was allowed to move, you know, to range, to, f to go out and walk long distances. Because today, if you have this crossed cow, you find that it will, if you moved it from here to maybe some other farm, it will certainly fall ill immediately because it's not used to moving long distance. I'm sure even the Ankole cow might be losing its, uh, you know, farm uh, hardiness because it's not allowed to move like yeah. it used to move. Traditionally, Bahima just, uh, it was a subsistence kind of uh, uh, production where we produced for our families. And really, okay, whenever there was a need, my father would take a cow to the market or someone would come and he sells the cow or a bull for that matter. My mother used to churn butter, I remember ghee, we call it ghee, and he, she would sell this ghee to whoever cared to pass by. But today the change has happened. It's some commercialization, it's a monetary system, all and all. So that's why everyone is bringing in the crosses so that we produce more milk and, you know, get some, more cash. And because there is a change, we are going to school. Traditionally, we did not go to school, so there was no need for money to educate the children, to, for the formal education, that is. So today we need money to take our children for formal education, and therefore we need cash. So we sell the bulls, we sell the cows, we sell milk, we sell everything. Oh,